world sure has changed in the last couple of years, hasn't it? It's amazing when you watch any kind of news updates or anything else, just how bad this world is quickly becoming. Morality is just almost non-existent now. And I'm here to tell you, as a minister of God, um, I've been in ministry for 10 years now, and in my 10 short years of ministry, I've seen things that are so shocking, it's just unbelievable. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Lord's been placing this message on my heart that I need to tell people out there, viewers, you need to flee from the wrath to come. I'm going to show you some four places in Scripture that talk about this. We're going to start out in Matthew chapter 3. I have a King James Bible here. This is the true Bible. The uh, ones from the Vatican, the new versions, New American Standard Version, NIV, whatever else. Uh, don't trust those. They're fake. They take verses out. They're from a whole different part of the world. Egyptian uh, Greek text versus a Syrian Greek text. But uh, that's a whole other issue. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Let's see about the first reference here to fleeing from the wrath to come. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. They then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That judgment that's coming is going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. The Bible talks about it in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. God's wrath is about to be poured out on this planet like no time in history. And what's going to happen is he's going to gather those that are saved. In that time period, he will save certain people, and he's going to gather them into his garner, which will be the millennial kingdom, a whole other study. But the rest, the chaff, the waste, he's going to burn them with unquenchable fire in hell, and then into the lake of fire in eternity. That's what's coming. But I want you to notice something here. Verse 6, And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Verse 8, Bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. You know what this country needs? What this world needs right now? It needs people to start to say, I'm a little bit worried about my sins. I think I'm in trouble with God. I need to do something about this. Problem is, if you're a sinner, you've tried to quit smoking. You've tried to quit drinking. You've tried to quit fornicating. You've tried to quit other sins. And you know you have. Unless you've totally killed your conscience. You've tried to quit certain things. And maybe you have quit certain things. But then you'll go into other things. And you get addicted to that. What's the problem? You need help from your Creator. Yeah. You better flee from the wrath to come. Let's go to the next one. Luke chapter... Three. I'm going to read a parallel passage to this. Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea, and of the region of Trachonitis and Licinius, the tetrarch of Abilene. Annas and Caiaphas being the high priest, the word of God came unto John the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of remission, or excuse me, of repentance for the remission of sins. Wicked things are going on, and he's saying there needs to be some repentance there of sin. Verse 4 
As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. That's going to be true in the future. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. You see it there again. Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to, of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answereth and saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed, uh, appointed you. Excuse me. Verse 14, And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Not very easy if you're trying to advance in the military, if you know what I mean. But notice there again, wrath. The wrath is coming. Flee from the wrath to come. And how do you do that? It's dependent. Wrath is coming upon you because of your sins. That's what we're learning here in this study. Now things have changed here. This is primarily Old Testament stuff that we're reading. The New Testament comes in, not in Matthew chapter 1, but with the death of the testator. Read about that in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 through 17. You can read that. Jesus Christ dying on the cross is what brought in the New Testament, not Matthew chapter 1. Right? The birth of Jesus was not the New Testament. He lived in the Old Testament times, and he brought in the New Testament with his death, burial, and resurrection. Right? That's important to get. Let's go next to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 1. And we're going to see a distinct change that's happened here. John the Baptist is preaching repentance and, and baptism for the remission of sins. But what happens here with what Paul is preaching? Because you see, John is before Jesus died on the cross, Paul is after. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. So that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and in and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from the idols to serve the living and true God. You see, there's a changed life there. There's an understanding, I'm a sinner, and they need to turn to the Lord and say, I need to be saved, and then that changes your life. But well, check this out. Verse 10. And to wait for his son from heaven, not the Antichrist, not the coming new world order. You see? Those things are part of God's wrath that he pours down. If you read Revelation chapter 6, it's Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that's opening the seals that unleashes the Antichrist. All right? That's important to get. To wait for his son. We're waiting for Jesus Christ from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus. There's no doubt who the son is. Look at this, which delivered us from the wrath to come. You see how bad the world is right now? You say, well, what are we supposed to do? Well, you can do whatever you want, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, number one. Number two, I'm waiting for Jesus Christ. He's going to deliver me from the wrath to come. Sadly, there's a lot of people that profess to be saved and they're believing that they're going to go through the wrath to come. 
And I think most of them are right. It's not because they're Christians. It's because they're false converts. Go to chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 20. And we'll see the final reference here. For this calls also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, see it? Ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye all also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing, are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. I can have glory and joy, and so can every other Christian out there, because we know we're waiting for Jesus Christ. When we look at, at this world and we see war on the horizon, North Korea tested another missile. They're trying to get an intercontinental ballistic missile, missile, their ICBM. They're trying to launch this, and it landed in the sea off the coast of Japan, and Iran is going to start this, and Russia is making threats, and Germany says we're no longer, you know, Mer Merkel says we're no longer going to be friends with America before long, and this is happening, and some guy killed his own mother and cut her head off and walked into some shopping mall with it. Or, and this guy here is eating somebody's face. And this, people just, this guy stabbed his wife and son to death and then shot himself in the head. And it, all this stuff, you know what it says to me as a Christian? Jesus is just about ready to take me out of here. He's delivered me from the wrath to come. You see, I'm part of his body. I'm saved. I'm born again. You can be too. Well, I don't know, but okay, then you're going into the wrath to come. Do you really want that? Well, I need to see more proof. You're going to see more proof. But you don't want to see the proof that's coming. You see, the solution to seeing moral degradation is for you to understand, I don't want to be part of this whole thing, but I can't be perfectly sinless on my own. I need to go to somebody who is perfectly sinless, and he will save me. And help me to have a changed life. You're not going to be sinlessly perfect when the Lord saves you. That's not what I'm saying. Never preached that. But Jesus Christ is sinlessly perfect. And He can help you. He will deliver you from the wrath to come. So, just wanted to say that video. Just uh, the Lord's really been putting this in my heart lately. There is wrath coming. If you think that uh, God is going to allow this thing to continue. And you know, I know that a lot of people, are, you know, they say, I'm an atheist and things like this. Just study societies. Societies fall. Moral degradation gets to a point where you have people that just say, every man does that which is right in his own eyes. The Bible talks about that. What happens when that occurs? When everybody becomes atheistic and they say, I make my own decisions, I'll make my own morals. I have my own convictions on things and whatever else. The society crumbles. Atheism has destroyed every single society it's ever been popped up in. So, but if you want to continue, go right ahead. As for me, I know how to get out of this wrath that's coming. So, watch our salvation message. It goes through the scriptures. Uh, I'm not going to get after you and say you got to send me, you know, so much money a month to, what well, you know, be part of the Salvation Club or something like it. Nope. You say, are you going to make me go to church? Nope. You'll be part of it. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The church is the body of Christ. Living Christians. The church has never been a building and never will be a building as far as here on this earth. Alright? Uh, most of what you think you know about Christianity is wrong. If you get a King James Bible and start reading it, you're going to see 
most modern day Christians, Christians, professing Christians, with the suits and ties and the church buildings and the whole, all that stuff, no basis at all in this book for that. Get it figured out soon. Uh, the wrath is coming. And I'm warning you to flee from the wrath to come.